Hi, we're really glad that you've decided to join us today. You know, you have joined us at a very special time. We're in the midst of our seven week book series. We're using a particular, this book, God of Love, God of Love, A Guide to the Heart of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam by Mirabai Starr. It's a sweet, it's a gentle book. Not only do we learn more about the practices of these Abrahamic religions, we also learn how to put them into practice in our life and to use them each and every day. One of our core values here is that of welcoming. We really believe that with all of our heart. In fact, as you enter into our garden court, right here on the wall, we put a, is wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And I, even though it's virtually today, we know that you are welcome here. We welcome you with our hearts and with our minds. We're just glad that you are with us. Look forward to an outstanding service today. Always great music, always great meditation and lesson. Our goal is that when you leave here, you feel better than when you got here. And if you do not, then perhaps you don't need to be here. But we really want to welcome you today. Let's go to church together. God bless you. morning and welcome. Welcome to our live stream service today. We live stream our Sunday service at 9.30 a.m. Central Time every week. You can watch archive services anytime on our website or Facebook page. Today you're invited to connect with friends by zooming into our 1045 virtual coffee hour and then Join us at 5 p.m. as we continue our weekly grace and peace meditation 
affirming inner peace and envision a peaceful transition into 2021. And next Sunday is our All Together with Gratitude service. Every, enjoy every, just seeing familiar faces on the screen during the service. It's gonna be great. PRISM is, in, is preparing their annual holiday toy shop and you are invited to lend your support in a variety of new ways. Details are on our website. Save the date for our virtual Thanksgiving communion service and simple supper on Wednesday the 25th. And Advent begins November 29th. And we are offering a variety of events during this season. We invite you to get a copy of Unity's 2020 Advent booklet, The Spirit of Christmas, to accompany our Sunday lesson during Advent. You can visit unity.org to request a copy for mail by mail or download. An easy link is also included in the, this week's peak. And then join Reverend Pat for our prayer journey to Advent from 5 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday from November 30th to January 6th. And Kevin Hudala teaches a trip to Bethlehem starting December 1st for six weeks. It would be great. Reverend Tony leads preparing for the winter solstice on Thursdays starting December 3rd. Learn more about all of our upcoming events and activities on the church website, Facebook page, or Peek at the Week, our, our e-newsletter. You can also contact the church through email or voicemail. And now we join Reverend Pat for our opening prayer. Join me in our opening prayer. I invite you, if you would, just to go to that place within your heart and within your mind where you know and you feel God's love this morning, this God of love. Let's just gently close out the outside world and we bring our attention inward. Inward to that place that only you can go. And as we take that deep breath together, and we surrender again to that infinite presence of God within. We are grateful. Grateful for the many blessings of life. Grateful for the opportunity to gather together virtually, to gather and remind ourselves of the truths that we teach during these most challenging times. We pray with those that have requested our prayers this morning. We pray with those that have sent Request through the mail, through the electronic mail, through the phone calls. And this morning, we especially hold in prayer those that are challenged with COVID. We hold them in our heart today, especially those within our own congregation. We hold each and every person that has been affected by this, seeing them surrounded by God's love and God's light. This morning, we also pray for our country. We pray for a peaceful transition of power and responsibility. We are grateful for this beautiful country that we call home. We say thank you. Thank you, thank you, God, for indeed, you are our source. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Now, join us in our opening hymn this morning, God is my source. Yeah. 
you know, Rachel Holder, thanks for filling in for Laurie Dawkins. And I look over here, and it looks like we have a brand new band this morning. I know. Lots so, of new faces. I have new faces. Would you tell us who's with us this morning? Yeah. So we have Liz Draper on the bass. Yes. Daryl Boudreaux on the drums. And this is his first time here. This is Jordan Headland on the piano this morning. And vocals. Oh, Jordan, it's good to have all of you here. We especially like our first-time guest here as well. You know, Unity is that uh, welcoming and opening and inclusive community, and we teach practical teachings that help us to live meaningful and healthy and prosperous lives. And for that, we are truly grateful. If you are new here or you feel like you are new here, we invite you to connect with us because we certainly want to connect with you. You can do that easily just by texting 313131, high unity, high unity, 313131, and fill out a connection card, and it would be a joy to connect with you. Regardless of where you are streaming with us in the world today, we're grateful that you have spent, you know, chosen to spend part of your day with us. And remember this, dear friends, that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, wherever that may be, you are welcome here. We welcome you, we bless you, and we behold the living presence of the divine within you. And I'm so grateful to have back on the platform today, well, a dear friend and a colleague, someone that's not been on the platform for some time, we fondly refer to each other as cowgirl and cowboy. So it's really great to have my cowgirl back this morning. She'll be providing not only the meditation, uh, reading of the daily word and the meditation. So let's settle in for the reading of the daily word with our beloved Reverend Jeanette. We now move deeper into the into spirit with the reading of the daily word. You are invited to mentally add your prayers to our prayer box and to mentally, to you are, <laughs> okay, I'll start over. You are mentally, um, you are invited to mentally add your prayers to the prayer box or submit an online prayer request via our website. Your prayers are prayed with by our prayer ministry for seven days. And then they are prayed for silent to silent unity, sent to silent unity where they are prayed with for another 30 days. And the word for today is kindness. And we affirm, I flow with divine love as I give and receive kindness. The word kindness triggers feelings of warmth, connection, and love in my heart. I smile as I recall ways that friends, family members, and others have shown me kindness. I feel again the gratitude and blessing I experienced in those moments. Gratitude, love, and a beautiful awareness of connection fill my heart and mind in a remarkably similar way when I remember kindness I've shared. The movement of electrons through a wire creates a current, a flow. As kindness moves from person to person, it creates a flow of divine love. Both giving and receiving are essential to this current of love. So I look for opportunities to share acts of kindness. I welcome with a grateful heart the kindness others share with me. And scripture tells us in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And the word for today is kindness.
Let us take a deep, gentle breath as we come together for a few moments of peaceful meditation. As we breathe into this very moment, let yourself find that space of peace. Breathe into peace and the joy of being in the presence of your creator and your spirit's natural space of co-creation. Your spirit is rejoicing. You have come to honor it. In this place, of ease and awareness. It is here you will find love. As our Muslim brethren say, the love, the being with spirit, creation, humanity, and stillness. The blessing of finding your creation, your God self, can energize you into action, not the thoughts and words of others. Let us take a moment to sense a presence beyond yet within our own knowing of our spirit's wisdom, love, and understanding as we rest in the silence for a moment. And now, as we return to this space in time, we remember to allow our daily habits to include the practice of communion with spirit, our power to expand love. And so we go forth and give thanks for this day and do what we are called to do. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. I think we can all relate to that song. I mean, I think we've all been through periods in our lives where we felt like we were in bondage and we were not free. You know, obviously, Emily Cady and her Lessons in Truth in that first chapter addresses that, that we have the opportunity to be free in our life. And what does that look like for us? You know, what does it look like for you? And then also, I really get it that I was in bondage for so long. I was not free. And as you sang that beautiful spiritual song, it was really about remembering that divine presence within, that divine presence within. And as I have that personal relationship with that divine presence, 
then I am free. I am free, and, and it, it frees us all up, I think, once we realize that we cannot do this alone, that we need that infinite presence within, that co-creator within. Let's just try creating life without that co-creator and see how it goes for you. It's not the best thing in the world to do. But when we are aware of that creator, then we co-create a life that works, that works. You know, we are finishing up on a beautiful seven-week series, The God of Love. And it just seems like we started it yesterday, and yet most of you have been with us through this whole journey. You realize we haven't, we just didn't start it. This is week seven. And this whole quest of this God of love is a reminder that it is an inner spiritual quest, just not the quest of Christianity, but also the Christ quest of also the other Abrahamic religions as well and other religions of the world. And that's one thing I love about our unity teachings. It gives us the opportunity to take those parts of those teachings that we want in our life and incorporate them into our life. They're not, it's not one path to God. There are many paths to God, many paths to God, and there's many paths to God, I believe, as there are individuals out there, and we each discover our own path. And yet what we have in common is this God of love that is the commonality of these different paths. And we've been looking at that for the last few weeks. That first week, we know, we said God is called by many names. There's one presence, one power. It is one. And we move towards that one presence and that one power. And then that second week, we were reminded that all creation praises God, that we're reminded to be mindful consumers, not mindless consumers, that we are here and we're good stewards of the earth. All creation praises God. And then, of course, that third week, it is our nature to long for the beloved, long for the beloved. We have this illusion of separation, and yet we know that we are not separated, we are one. But because of this illusion of separated, separation, we seem to find love languages that we express, that mystics throughout the ages have expressed, to long to be with that divine presence and ex experience that divine presence. And then on week four, we talked about sacred service and compassionate action. And when we, when we know God and when we love God, then it is our nature to step in to divine compassion and divine service. It's not a hard thing to do. It's just natural after we know and we love this divine presence within and then, of course, on week five, we talked about mercy and forgiveness and reconciliation. And we were reminded that, you know, forgiveness is for ourselves. And yes, of course, at times we want reconciliation, but that's not always possible. And yet, it is at times possible. But, of course, we know that that forgiveness is for ourselves, and it's, it's not for God. God holds no unforgiveness. God has, holds no unforgiveness. And then, of course, last week, that indwelling presence was talked about, the feminine face of the divine, and how that the feminine face of the divine had been uh, subdued for centuries and centuries, and finally it is coming back where it rightfully belongs, standing next to the masculine, where there is balance between the masculine and the feminine. And then today, we're going to talk a little bit about the path of suffering and exaltation. Suffering, wow. We don't go around talking a lot about that in unity. Have you noticed? We're that positive people. We're positive. We're a positive path for spirituality. We're positive. We have affirmations, you know. But yet, we are reminded early on in this chapter by Mirabai Star, something that I want to share with you. She writes right up front. She says, two things are guaranteed to hook you up with God of love, sorrowing and rejoicing. You do not need to go searching for either. <laughs> I laughed. That's so true. It seems like we're just doing just fine. The flight is just fine. And all of a sudden we hit turbulence. And everything starts floating around. Our life is fine and then suddenly something happens. They are written, it says, she says that this Joy, rejoicing and sorrowing is written into the architecture of human existence. Youth and beauty ripen and decay. The man you long for uh, is obsessed with someone else. The woman you fell in love with has sold her soul to an alcoholic. Some with whom the fabric of your own life is interwoven dies 
and your heart unravels, the foundation drops right out from under you. you. How can you possibly live in a world without the one that you love? Yes, we don't have to go looking for sorrowing and suffering. It seems to find us. You know, and yet when it finds us, whether we consciously or unconsciously bring this into our experience, when it finds us, what do we do? What do we do? Well, in James, the chapter in James, I want to share with you what uh, James, Jesus' brother, was writing. He was writing to a group of new Christians that were having a tremendous amount of problems. And this is what he says. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, James, uh, the first chapter, verses 2 through 8. Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. Let's take a deep breath on that. Myrtle Fillmore, in her book, How to Let God Help You, in her chapter on the cloven hoof, she starts out that chapter by saying, count it all Joy. Diddly squat. When I am in the midst of sorrow, I am told by Myrtle and by James to count it all joy. That's right. And my experience has been, I don't, may not count it joy there in that moment of suffering and grief, but I have a heart that is open to allow joy to emerge as well. Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be strong in character and ready for anything. So even then, James, the brother of Jesus, writing to a new church, writing to new Christians, new followers, they were having suffering, they were having uh, problems, and he says, count it all joy. Myrtle, again, I refer to Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity. Sometimes I take that for granted, that everybody knows that Charles and Myrtle Fillmore founded Unity, and that's not true. Everybody does not know that, but Myrtle... (laughs) And I jokingly say sometimes, Myrtle founded Unity. Charles just came along. But needless to say, Myrtle, she had some of the most richest writings in our movement. And she says uh, in a book, How to Let God Help You, she says, we understand that hell, you know, we don't teach a lot about hell either, do we? We understand that hell is a purifying process, that suffering is a purifying process. And then when the soul does go through to rid it of dos and weakness, that's what it's ridding of. Those things that dos, I had to look it up. It's like when you purify ore, there's a substance that comes out of it that is wasteful. And so when we feel like that we're going through this hell of suffering, there's something that's coming out of us that we no longer need, that it is wasteful. And we're going through that purifying process. She goes on to say, the purifying spirit contains its work in us until we come forth free from all that does not measure up to the Christ standard. Wow. In other words, I don't know about you, but on my spiritual journey, I have constantly been letting go, letting go, letting go. Are those things that do not measure up to what we would refer to in unity as the Christ standard. Those things that Jesus would teach about and other master teachers would teach about as well. Those things that no longer work, we have to let them go. Regardless of whether it's addiction, regardless of whether it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll, regardless of what it is, those things that don't work, we go through that process of letting it go. And that process of letting it go is not always easy. She says, wow, 
The purifying fire of spirit continues at work in us until we come forth free from all that does not measure up to the Christ standard. Once I am free, I am free. I was in bondage, but now I'm free. It is for our good and does not harm us, except we resist it or do not make an effort to give up and to avoid what caused the undesirable condition of the soul, body, or affairs. When this comes up, there's something for us to do. We bless it and we are joyful that it came up so that we can see that we can go about changing it. And she says it's harmless unless we avoid it and we resist it. We resist it, this undesirable condition of the soul. So just look yourself over and see what it is that makes it necessary for you to go through hell so often. I've heard of this, you know, you know hell is going, going through hell is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. My dear friends, where are you going through hell again and again and again? It's coming up for it to be healed. And yet, at the same time, for whatever reason, you choose to suffer. Myrtle says, perhaps you have just failed to realize that you are entirely purified and free and ready to enter into the kingdom of peace and love, order and love and beauty and the fiery furnace is not necessary. She says that we can stop the suffering by doing three things. She says, first of all, stop believing in them and the necessity for going through hell. Stop it. There's something about us sometimes we believe that we have to go through hell. Yes, we have to go through hell for purification. But how many times do we have to go through it in order to, in order to be free? Second, make up your mind that you're not going to stand for them not a moment of longer. And third, watch your thoughts and attitudes and acts to see what you do not invite undesirable states. And I know. She goes on in parenthesis here. She says, oh, you do not invite them in intentionally. Of course, but you do invite them in some way, else they would not come to see you. Really, Myrtle. She's right. You know, we do not know how. And so we, that's how we do our transformational work. We look at those things that we're attracting into our life. And we attract these things in our life by right of consciousness. And so we look to see what we want to stop. We want to stop so we can stop experiencing the suffering in hell. I also want to share with you that I believe there are several reasons that we suffer. Gary Simmons, a unity minister, I just, he just posted a quote on Facebook this week that really resonated with me. And he says, the first step to wholeness is seeing the distinction between you and your experience. When you confuse yourself with what you are having, you set yourself up for suffering. In other words, my friend, we are not our experiences. We are not. We are not our body. When we think that we are our body, when we think that we are our experiences, then, and we want things to be different, then we have that emotional and mental suffering. But the first thing that we want to look at, regardless of what we're going through, if it's a death of a loved one, if it's a death of ourselves, if it's a death of if the ending of a relationship, if it's uh, prosperity problems, if it's uh, emotional problems, we are not the experience. I am not the experience that I am having. I want you to say that with me. I am not the experience that I am having. And once we realize this, we can realize that the I am, the I am is always free. I think another reason that I suffer sometimes is because not only do I think I'm like the experiences that I have, but I think sometimes that I suffer because of those things that we talked about week before last. That I'm just doggone not willing to do some forgiveness work. 
And if I'm not willing to do my forgiveness work, I am going to suffer. And as we were reminded in that lesson, we will only be able to forgive others to the degree that we forgive ourselves. And a beautiful reminder that we're not, we're not doing this for God. God holds no unforgiveness. We're doing this for ourselves so that we can be free that we can be free of any suffering and any pain and, and live free. Unforgiveness keeps me in suffering. I think another thing that keeps me suffering is that I want things to be the way I want them to be. Whoa, someone died and left me in charge of the universe and somebody is not doing it my way. And when I think that someone should be doing it a different way, and I have no power over them whatsoever, and I still think that they should be doing it a different way, then guess what? I suffer. I suffer. Thomas, Thomas uh, a Kempis, uh, a Catholic mystic, actually, he writes, Be not angry that you cannot make others as you wish them to be since you cannot make yourself as you wish to be. Wow. We don't have the power within ourselves to do it all by ourselves. It's the God presence within that helps me to change my life. And so often what happens in my life is I can focus somewhere out on someone else, wanting them to be different, as opposed to changing my own life. And we know that transformation begins within Transformation begins within. So I want things to be different. And, and as I've been told in another program, acceptance is the key to all my problems. Acceptance is the key to all my problems. So if I'm, if I'm accepting it for what it is right now, that doesn't mean that I don't have to live with it. You know, do I like the fact that COVID is spiking huge in the state of Minnesota and in our country. Do I like it? No. No, but I have to accept that's what it is for right now. And then I know that I have to do my part, my part in controlling this virus. And sometimes doing my part is not always the easy thing to do. It's things that I don't want to do. Sometimes I don't want to wear that mask, but I know how important it is. Sometimes I don't want to wash my hands 15 times a day, but I know how important it is. Sometimes I don't want to social distance and physical distance from these beautiful musicians, but I know how important it is. Sometimes I don't want to refrain from hugging. I'm the biggest hugger in the whole wide world but I know how important it is. So I know that if I think that I can do it differently or I choose not to do, carry out those, those procedures that's been suggested by our medical community, then I know that I too will suffer perhaps even physically. And so it's important for us to accept things as they are and then move our feet. Accept things as they are and then move our feet. That's an important process for us. And I know that we're, we're, doing, we're honoring that as a community. I don't like not being in this sanctuary with you. It's not my favorite thing to speak to a camera each and every Sunday. But I give thanks that I can. Because that means that I get to connect with you. I get to connect with you. I think sometimes another reason that Suffering is so great in my life at times. It's because I am not willing to let go. I'm not willing to let go of those things that no longer serve me. I'm not willing to, even the material world sometimes, not willing to let that go. Much less the emotional world, not willing to let that go. Not willing to let anger go. Not willing to let unforgiveness go. Because I'm not willing to let these things go. Then, my goodness, do I really trust spirit that it will fill me with something greater? something greater in my life. 
I want to share a story with you. I don't think I've shared this with you. been with you for a while, but I'll share a story with you. My first career, as you know, many of you know that I was in uh, the, the retail industry for many years. And I, had a, I was in, uh, living in New Orleans, and I had a wonderful relationship with a man in New York. That was my marketplace. It was a wonderful place to be. And so I st struck up a great relationship with him, and we were in relationship for several years. And so I was still actively, actively sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I was not a pretty person, you know? I was not. And so the relationship ended. <laughs> you know, I, I, was the, I was the dumped. You know, I was not the dumpy, I was the dumped. And so the relationship ended, and rightfully so as I look back on that, and rightfully so, you know, I was not free. I was in bondage. And so the relationship ended, and I went ahead with my career and um, went into ministry. And, um, but we, during that time, I got clean and sober, and so part of that process was making amends. I went and I made amends to Gregory. I went and I made amends and told him how sorry I was and, uh, you know, asked for forgiveness. And guess what? Our relationship continued in a friendship way. In a friendship way, we stayed in touch. We stayed in touch with each other. And it was absolutely uh, uh, wonderful. We didn't stay in touch often, but at least when I thought of him and he thought of me, I believe it was good thoughts, you know, good thoughts. And so I, I stepped into ministry. I was serving a church in, in Cincinnati. And that was when... And, Suddenly, I got a call from him, and he told me that he, was, that he was ill, that he was ill. And I said, I'm so sorry. And I stayed in touch with him a little bit. And um, one of his caregivers called me and said, if you want to see him, you need to come. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I said, I am way too, said to myself, I was in denial. I was in total denial. And I thought to myself, I am just way, way too busy, way too busy right now. I cannot go right now. I didn't tell them that, but I didn't go. I didn't go to see my friend. His twin brother had preceded him in death. You know, so I, I knew that he was probably alone with the exception of his care team and his medical team. And here I am, a minister. Way too busy to go. Way too busy to go. And so I didn't. That was in October. In December, I sent a Christmas card. And in early January, the card was returned from the law firm that was handling his estate, letting me know that he had died. I felt terrible. I was so sad. I was so sad. Not just about the death of Gre Gregory. I'm sure he had suffered a lot with cancer. Not just about his death. But I was sad and angry. I felt guilty. I was mad at myself. How could God, how could God love me? How could God love me? How could I even continue doing the work that I felt I was called to do? So I knew that I had to get quiet. I knew I had to go inside. I knew I had to connect with that divine spirit of God within. And I thought of the words of, of um, Emily Cady. And let me just be sure I get this right. But I thought of, uh, she says in her book, Lessons in truth. This is a deal breaker. This is a life changer. But I knew without a doubt, I thought of these, I, I thought of these words. It was, there is, no, <clears throat> there is no permanent or real outward way of escape from miseries or circumstances. All help must come from within. So I knew that I had to go within I knew that I had to sit hour after hour till I could feel that divine presence, till I could feel that presence of God again and to know that I was worthy of continuing on this path. So as I was meditating one day and reading, the words came to me that, that I heard that I've used 
in many memorial services. And those words were, in time, allow your sorrow to turn to joy. Not because you lost someone, but because you had someone. And it was at that point that I began to change my inner thinking. It was at that point that I began to change my inner thinking and to to know without a doubt that God was present, that God was present and that I was loved. And it was in that point where I knew that I could hold joy and suffering at the same time. It was in that point where I knew that I could hold suffering and forgiveness forgiveness and and joy that my consciousness was large enough and expansive enough to hold it all and I felt the divine presence and I felt worthy I asked Gregory on the other side to forgive me to forgive me and a quiet assurance came that he had I want to close with a reading from Mirabai Star. She writes, oh, I so related to the scripture, this passage. Mystics dwell in the zone between unbearable suffering and transcendent joy. I want to read that again because I don't believe it's just mystics. We're all mystics. We're all mystics as long as we acknowledge the mystery of God. Mystics dwell in the zone between unbearable suffering and transcendent joy. And I've seen that with people. I've seen it in funerals and memorial services where there was suffering and sadness. And at the same time, underneath all of that was a quiet joy that gave strength. That gave strength to those that were suffering. Mystics dwell in the zone between unbearable suffering and transcendent joy. Heirs to the human condition which administers pain and delights in unpredictable doses. We all have the opportunity to let our experiences break us open. To place beyond the dualities of good and evil, right and wrong, self and divine. That's what this journey is about. It's about breaking us open so that it's just not good and bad and self and the divine. It's all of it. It's all of it. So my my request of you this week, your assignment if you choose to accept it, is this. Ask yourself, where on my spiritual journey can I hold the suffering and the joy? Where can I hold them both? And realize that it is only through the fire of spirit, that fire of spirit, that we allowed to work through us, that that suffering dissipates. I love you, I bless you, and I behold the living presence of the divine within you. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. to the dark hide away they say we don't want your broken parts learn to be ashamed of all my scars run away they say no one will love you as you are don't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us The sharpest words want to cut me down. Could have sent a flood and drown a mile. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, cause here I come. And I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make
Oh my goodness, this is me, this is me, you know, regardless of our experiences, regardless of what we've done, regardless of the forgiveness work, this is me, this is who we are. And I love that song. I listened to it twice this morning before coming here, just it inspired me so much. And at the same time, you know, there's an I within us, that me, our I within us, it's always perfect, it's never touched, it's pure, it's purified, that's the divine presence within let us not forget that, that we are not our experiences. We are not. So this is a time where we pause and we invite you to make a gift to Unity Minneapolis. You can do so in a variety of ways. First of all, if you're streaming with us on our website, just hit that donate, donate, I almost said donut, but I'm not eating donuts these days, donate button, and you can easily do so on our secured website. Also, if you're streaming with us, you can also text 77977 on your mobile phone, 77977, give to Unity, and that will also take you to a secured place to make a donation. And when you're there, consider making a reoccurring donation. So that means that when you're not streaming with us or not with us, that your financial gift continues to support Unity Minneapolis. We are grateful for that. And then, of course, you can also give to Unity Minneapolis through the mail, right through the mail. We're still receiving mail, so we invite you to send your donation that way as well. So let us take that deep breath together. Let us just go within and give thanks. Give thanks for the opportunity to be together virtually, to be together in spirit. Grateful that who we are is good enough and that we are indeed worthy. We are God's child. And we are grateful for that. Now I'm going to affirm our church offertory blessing and ask you to affirm it with me. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. Together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. Thank you, God.
Wow, thank you. Thank you very much. It's so good to have all of you with us this morning. You know, I knew what this meant. I knew what this meant. I, sometimes I look at the back row and I go, when we were in person, I would hear, yeah, yeah, time, you know, time to wrap it up here, wrap it up. Glad you're with us. Glad you're with us. It's been a great morning. So a a couple of things I want to share with you. Our prayer chaplains are holding sacred space right now as we speak. They're holding sacred space at home. So if you have a prayer request, by all means, go to our website. Fill that out, that prayer request. And our prayer chaplains and our prayer ministry will be right there in prayer with you. Today, I also want to just remind you that we have a wonderful Youth and Family Ministry program here at Unity Minneapolis. So take advantage of that under our director, Cassidy Meeks, is doing a great job. So we appreciate our families. We appreciate our youth. So at this time, and don't forget, next week, next week, is all together now with gratitude. It's Gratitude Sunday. We're doing all together now. It's an intergenerational service. I'm going to invite Reverend Jeanette to the platform with me. And we are going to do the uh, prayer for protection and our peace song, okay? So together we know that the light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is. I am divine and all is swell. Now then our peace song.
I'm so glad you joined us today. We sincerely hope that you had a great experience. I'm loving this series, God of Love. And we hope also that you're getting a lot from it as well. My dear friends, just remember that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And so until next time, God bless you. May you create a great day.